Otitis media, otherwise known as an ear infection of the middle ear, occurs when a virus or bacteria causes the area behind the eardrum to become inflamed or infected. The condition is most common in children, in fact 80% of children by the time they reach 3 years old will have had one. If you're a parent, it might be even scary and confusing to decide whether or not to go to the ER and wonder if you really need you or your child to be seen. So in this video, I'll be breaking down middle ear infections and when you should seek help. So stay tuned till the end. Ear infections occur as a result of a cold, sore throat, or respiratory infection. Other factors that put you at risk for developing them are being around someone who smokes, if you have a family history of ear infections, a weakened immune system, if your child spends time at a daycare, and even as subtle as having your child being bottle fed whilst laying on their back. But how do they all happen? It all goes back inside the eustachian tube. You might be thinking, what on earth is that? Let's take a quick look. Here is a eustachian tube and we all have one because it helps to equalize the pressure between the outer ear and the middle ear. It also helps to drain excess fluid from our ears into our throat to prevent buildup. When the tube is not working properly, let's say because you have a cold and you have all this congestion swelling up of the nose, throat and the eustachian tube, normal drainage of fluid can't cross over causing a fluid buildup behind the eardrum. And when the fluid can't drain, bacteria and viruses start to grow in the ear which leads to what is known as acute otitis media. Here are the culprits. So why does this happen to kids more than adults? Kids especially 2-4 to four years old have tubes that are shorter and more horizontal which let bacteria and viruses find their way into the middle ear more easily. The tubes are also narrower so they are more likely to get blocked. See how that could be a problem now? It can be very apparent when you or your child have one because their ear will have a lot of pain, possibly hearing difficulty, fluid dip drainage from their ears, your child becoming very irritable often with a fever, especially in infants, and a loss of balance but always consult with your child's healthcare provider for a diagnosis as these symptoms could resemble others as well. And speaking of your child's doctor, here are all the signs and symptoms you should be aware of for when to get help. If the symptoms last for more than a day, if the symptoms are present in a child less than six months old, if the ear pain is severe, often with a fever, if your infant or toddler can't get to bed or is too irritable after a cold or res upper respiratory infection, and if you observe a discharge of fluid, pus, or even a bloody fluid from the ear. If you see any of these signs it's important to get an accurate diagnosis and call your child's doctor immediately. Most ear infections can clear on their own within a week or two without treatment and symptoms get better within a couple of days. The American Academy of Pediatrics and the American Academy of Family Physicians both recommend a wait and see approach. As far as pain management, kids will get medicine for pain relief, either Tylenol or Advil or pain relieving eardrops as long as the eardrum isn't ruptured. Antibiotics are usually held off for a few days to see if the infection gets better because they won't help infection if it's caused by a virus, they won't get rid of middle ear fluid, they have side effects and they usually don't relieve pain in the first 24 hours. Also overuse of antibiotics can lead to antibiotic resistant bacteria which are more harder to treat but for the meantime it's important to ensure you take some right steps to prevent them occurring again for you or your child in the future. Here are some things you could do to prevent middle ear infections. Also if you have any tips leave them below in the comments as well. You want to prevent common colds and other illnesses, avoid secondhand smoke and smoky environments in general. Breastfeed your baby if possible for at least six months but if you do bottle feed hold your baby in an upright position, and lastly, ensure all vaccinations for you and your child are up to date. I hope that this video was helpful or useful to you in any way. Please do smash that like button below as this helps others to see the video as well. If you found this video valuable in any way, please hit that subscribe button below to stay up to date with all my weekly videos. And as always, see you on the next one.